Okay, let's talk about the ACT exam and specifically we're going to be talking about the mathematics section of it. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you're getting ready for the ACT, which is outstanding. So maybe you're going to be taking the ACT and or the SAT. Both tests, they're, although there's differences, they're both challenging and um, uh, the main idea as far as the math part goes is you're really going to have to uh, have a great um, foundation and understanding of high school level mathematics. So that would be pretty much Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. So if you understand these core courses here, um, and you, I mean truly understand them, then you know that's your that's going to be the the first step in mastering um, these math problems on the ACT and or SAT. So uh, a little bit about me, I'm a math teacher, teach middle school math, high school math, I've taught college math, been doing this a long time, I've also tutored for many many years, so I've seen the pattern um, uh, when it comes to the standardized tests, is that st the students that do really really well are those that already have mastery in these areas. So if um, you know, it's not the ones who go, well, I'm going to get a test taking book, take a bunch of practice tests. Well, if you do that, but you don't really have these skills down that you're learning these particular courses, then you're, you're doing yourself a little bit of a disservice. So you really want to focus on mastering these concepts, you know, uh, reviewing and mastering and understanding these and then moving on to your test taking strategies, etc., uh, to benefit you. So we're going to get into this uh, little practice problem here in a second, but I wanted to just um, highlight that with you. Now, real quick, if you're looking for a great uh, math program and you find that you like my um, teaching style, I actually have an ACT math prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check it out. But with that being said, let's get into a practice prom uh, that you should be able to do if you expect to do well on the ACT. So I, I have a triangle here, right? So you're saying, well, what's the problem? What's the question? Well, I'm going to explain it to you now. So my question is this is this a, an actual triangle? Is this a real triangle? Okay. If you're like, you're, uh, what do you mean by that, right? So I see a triangle. Yes, you see an actual triangle here, but can this be an actual real triangle with these measurements? Okay. With these measurements, can this be an actual triangle? All right. So obviously the answer is either going to be yes or no. So you need to, um, figure out how would you reason through this and how do you substantiate your answer? How can you conclusively say yes it is an actual triangle these measurements would actually produce an, uh, a triangle or no they would not. Okay so kind of given well I don't want to give you too many clues here but hopefully you can kind of see where this is going. So if you want to try the problem uh, you may want to pause the video and take a moment and for those of you that just want to get to the solution, let's get into it. So the answer here is no. Okay, no, this is not a triangle. So why is that the case? Well, there's something very, very important that you learn uh, in your mathematics journey along these courses here. And it's taught in various courses. Generally, it's taught in geometry, but you can see it in algebra. But you really need to know it. And that's the triangle inequality, okay? The triangle inequality. So there's two forms of it, of the triangle inequality. One it has to deal with the lengths of the sides, and then another one that we can talk about the angles of a triangle. So the one that we're going to be talking about here is the the lengths of a side of a triangle. So we have a a uh, property, okay, a triangle inequality. Um, I'm not quite sure. I can't recall right off the top of my my head here if it's a theorem or a postulate um, or a property. But basically, it's a, it's a, it's a law that you need to kind of understand um, in geometry. And the way it works is this: in a triangle, okay, an actual real triangle. Let's actually take one that we know here for a second and then we'll come back to our problem. Let's take a nice right triangle, three, four, five. Okay, this is a this is an actual triangle. These are actual lengths. This is a Pythagorean uh, triple, which means that 
we have a nice integer value. So 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to be equal to uh, 5 squared. Okay, so this is an actual triangle. No tricks here or whatnot. But I'm going to go ahead and explain the triangle inequality in this particular problem, and then we'll go, we'll go back and, and see why this is not a triangle. So the way the triangle inequality works is basically any if you take any two sides of a triangle, any two sides, it will always be larger than the other side, the last remaining side. So in other words, 3 plus 4 will always be greater than 5. Okay, so these two sides, if I add up any two sides, it will be greater than the remaining side of that triangle. So 3 plus 4 is greater than 5. We could see that, right? So 3 plus 4, 7 is greater than 5. That's true. So that checks out. But we're not done yet. Let's kind of look at other combinations. Let's take 3 and 5. And let's see if that's greater than 4. So let's see here. 3 plus 5. Is that greater than 4? Obviously it is, but we'll just go through this anyways, right? So this is 8. It is greater than 4. That's true. Okay. And then last but not least, let's do, um, well actually let's do 5 and 4. Okay, so 5 and 4. So 5 plus 4. Is that greater than 3? So 9 is in fact greater than 3. So that's true. So when we look at all the combinations of this triangle, that when we add up any two sides, it's always greater than the remaining side. This is the tri triangle inequality. Okay, think of it this way: if I give you three like sticks, like maybe popsicle sticks, and one was five inches long, another one was three inches long, and another one was like four inches long, I said, "Can you construct a triangle?" Now, you know, from these uh, these sticks. So you would say, okay, let me take the, the one that's three here, and I'll put the, another one that's four, and then that five would, would perfectly meet the corners of these two. In other words, you wouldn't have a triangle that looks like this. Like here's five, here's three, and here's four, where this extends off. I'm not talking about this part forms a triangle. I'm talking about, you know, with this if this side continues on, and, and you have some figure like this, well, this is not a triangle. Okay, this part is a triangle, but with these lengths, this is too long. Okay, and if I try to open this side up to reach it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't reach it, right? So I couldn't close this to be a perfect triangle. This is the triangle inequality. Okay, so hopefully um, the way I'm explaining it makes sense to you. But now let's get back to this problem. All right, so we can see here I have 15 and 4. So let's just test the size of this triangle. So I got 15 and 4. So 15 plus 4, is that greater than 7? And we got 19. Yes, is indeed greater than 7. That's true. However, we can't just relax and be like, oh, we just test on one side. That's fine. We have to continue on, right? So let's test the other one. So we'll test 15 and 7. 15 plus 7, is that greater than 4? So this is going to be what, 22? So this is 22, is that greater than 4? That's true, no problem. But you can see here is where we're going to run into problems, okay? If I take 7 and 4, let's do this right here, is 7 plus 4, is that greater than 15, all right? Well, 7 plus 4 is what? That's 11. Is 11 greater than 15? Well, no, that's false. Okay? 11 is not greater than 15. Okay? So 11 is not greater than 15. So we got a problem here because uh, this plus this, these two sides, the sum of this is not greater than this side. This is not a triangle. All right? So this is a. Um, an illustration of the triangle inequality. Now again there's another um, triangle inequality that has to do with angles but this particular one with sides is really critical. Now you may not um, actually even see it um, you know we could have taken a look at this problem using variables for example I don't want to go off on a tangent but you might see something like let's say this might be like 3x, 2x and maybe like 8x something like that and the same principles would 
would apply, okay, because you're just adding up these variable terms. So triangle inequality, definitely something you want to know for the ACT. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so again, you know, if you just stumbled upon my channel, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos that will definitely help you prepare um, for the ACT. Again, my background is mathematics. It's what I've been doing for a long time. Um, I focus on trying to teach things clear and understandable. So you can definitely get a lot of help from my channel if you like my teaching style. If you want to check out my complete comprehensive uh, ACT math prep course, again, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. If you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know why you're taking the ACT. Maybe it's the um, the college that you're you're going after, you know, prefers the ACT over the SAT, or maybe you do just find the ACT easier. There's pros and cons to uh, to both exams. Um, they are there's differences, okay, but there's also a lot of similarities in terms of the mathematics, and that is basically, again, there's no getting around it. You really have to understand, you know, high school level mathematics to do well. All right, so. With that being said, I wish you all the best on the ACT. Thanks for your time, and have a great day.